All right, so today I wanna to talk to you about when to outsource to a virtual assistant, dealing with entrepreneurial burnout, which I have experienced, and how to build a business that gives you free time. So there's a lot of things I wanna talk about today, but I thought it was really important because I've actually been getting a lot of questions from some of you who watch this channel about you know outsourcing, hiring a virtual assistant, um, how to find people, and also just like, dealing with the overall business challenges that we all deal with. So today I wanna to talk to you about that. I'm gonna be breaking down some strategies I have used to outsource, to find virtual assistants, to find good virtual assistants. And then I wanna talk about work-life balance, how hiring or outsourcing or automating parts of your business can actually give you more free time to do stuff like self-care because self-care is very important. So I'm gonna share a little story about why I started hiring virtual assistants in my business. When I first started, I was a social media manager. I was running a social media agency. This was like over 10 years ago. And I started out by myself doing all the client work, just trying to do all the things. And I got burnt out the first time. <laughs> that was the first burnout. I've had other situations that I have burnt out from, but that was the first time I realized I needed to get help. So what I did was I actually hired an assistant social media manager, VA person. Now that's gonna give you a starting point as far as what tasks you're going to give to a potential virtual assistant. Typically it's gonna be tasks that you don't wanna do, tasks that are tedious. I recommend you start off with tasks that are easy to do, but are like very repetitive or tedious, right? Something that you can easily train another person to do. This could be data entry, this could be coordinating your calendar, responding to emails in your inbox. You can actually have a virtual assistant answer your emails, talk to potential clients. This way you don't have to be in your email every single week, right? That's a time suck. It's gonna take you away from things. All right, so now you have those tasks, I want you to write a job description. You're gonna write a brief job description talking about your business and what you do. You don't have to give a bunch of personal information or too much information away, but just kind of let people know something about your business so that they'll get excited about wanting to work with you. And then after you have that little business description, below that's gonna be the job requirements. And that's gonna be the specific tasks you want this virtual assistant to do on a weekly or monthly basis. So write down what are those main tasks they have to do. After that section of tasks, at the bottom, you wanna have another section where you tell the VA or the potential VA who's applying for this job, the specific skills that they need to have. Do you need someone to speak well, to communicate well, to write well, to be good at communication in general? Do you need someone who has specific technical skills like web design, graphic design, who knows how to use a specific app that maybe you use in your business? Like for my business, I use a lot of Canva. I use Canva a lot. So when I typically hire a VA, I want them to know how to use Canva. So I will put that in the job description so that you know we screen the right people out. The second thing you wanna do is create an application form because whenever I post a job description, I also tell people to fill out a form. On this form, I collect their name, first and last name, their email address, and then I ask them to add like a resume or upload a copy of their portfolio. Some people have a portfolio of work that highlights you know, the things they've done in the past. And you may also wanna ask a few questions there, like you know, please describe your, your experience doing X, Y, Z. So you can ask maybe like two, two to three different screening questions if you want to, that's just optional. But you wanna collect some information so you can actually track the people who apply for the job and then you can get back to them. And I like to put this in a spreadsheet of all the people who apply for these jobs. So I use either Airtable, which is good for forms. I also have used Google Forms. You can Google Forms is free. If you have a Gmail account, you can use Google Forms. And you can create an application right in Google Forms. It's very, very simple to create. The next step is you're gonna start sharing the job description. You wanna go into Facebook groups for business owners or virtual assistants. A great place to find VAs is a site called Upwork. I have a link to Upwork in the description of this video. You can check that out. But I hire a lot of virtual assistants from Upwork all the time. Upwork is a freelancer platform. When people start applying for the job, I have them fill out the application and then I collect a list of them. Once I have about you know a good amount of like candidates, then I start looking at their portfolio, their resume, and now we get to the next step. And this is the step that a lot of people don't do and that's why they, they don't hire correctly, they hire the wrong people, or they're not happy with the person they're hiring. I actually give people a paid test. 
I make them take a test, and I want to I want to see can you really create social media um, graphics in Canva? Can you really do what you say you supposedly know how to do? I test them out. I pay a very small fee. This could be anywhere between ten to twenty dollars, thirty dollars per test, and I just pay them. I'm like, hey, I want you to create three Canva graphics for Instagram, and I'm going to pay you twenty dollars. <laughs> that's really that's the secret right there because. What's going to happen is, number one, they only get paid if they do the test. So I'm not going to pay them before that. But what's going to happen is the people who aren't for real, the, the people who are fake, the people who are lying, are not going to do the test. That's number one. And then the other thing you're going to find out is, if this, does this person even have the skill? Are they good? Can they actually create graphics like they said on the resume? And so you can tell by doing this test. You're also looking for like speed, right? When someone does a test and they get that test done within like 28 to 48 hours, I'm like, this person is serious and they're good at it. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna try to hire you, right? So it, it lets you see like how serious and how um, professional a person is. You can have them do multiple tests. You can do, uh, you know, different tasks. And so you make that up based upon what you want them to do. All right, so once you have, let's say you, you do a test you give it to five people and two people pass the test. The other three people don't pass the test. Now you have two people that did well. I typically, what I do is I will hire two VAs because I want to test those people out over a period of time. So I give them like a month to work with me. And I tell them, this is just going to be a, we're going to just see if it works out for one month. And if you do well after a month, then I'll keep you on. And so this is further, I'm still screening, I'm still, I'm still testing out. I'm trying to see if this person is trustworthy, reliable, consistent. How do they communicate with me? Do they communicate? Do they communicate consistently? Like when I email them, when I message them, do they, how, you know, how quickly do they get back to me? So I'm looking for that because I, I want to get someone I can trust long term. So I recommend you do that as well because you want to trust this person that you are going to hire as a virtual assistant, right? So that's the next step. And so once we pass that 30 day mark, then there's a 90 day probation period. And I don't really feel 100% good with someone until we hit that 90 days. And they've been very consistent with me for, for 90 days. I start to feel really comfortable. And so, yeah, and then by that time, 90 days passes, you you know, I would have already trained them. They, they'll have known more about my business, how to do certain tasks. So they'll be trained by 90 days. And so now you have someone who can work in your business. You know, you spend time training them. Now, this is where the other part is. Once you hire a virtual assistant, you have to train them. You need to have training. I use a tool for training. I use um, a tool called Loom, where I can, like, create a screen share of my, my screen, my computer, and I can, like, show them exactly how to do specific tasks that I want them to do every single month for me. And I could just record it right there and then share it with them. So Loom is good for quick tutorials that you can show them how to do things um, visually. I also write down, as I have a Google Doc that I have instructions for specific tasks. I use a project management tool called Notion to hire and manage my, I actually not to hire, but to manage the virtual assistants that do work with me. Whoever comes on my team, I put them in a Notion board. I give them very, very detailed instructions as far as what I want them to do. And so that really helps. Eventually you're going to want to have like SOPs, which are called, which are short for standard operating procedures. And these are going to be training documents that you're going to store. It could be video training or it could be text. It could be a Google Doc. Um, and so you want to have a, a location where you keep a list of different SOPs. SOPs for how to answer your emails, how to reply to emails, how to use Canva, how to use your CRM system, depending on which CRM system you use. So you can have this there because in the future, you may want to hire another virtual assistant. Or what if happened, something happens to the VA you hired doesn't work out? You can easily hire another VA and then quickly train them again. So having an SOP library is essential. All right, so I covered like some of my little secrets to hiring a virtual assistant and make sure you get the right person. And so that's really it. I mean, a VA is there to take off, you know, help you save time. A lot of virtual assistants work part time. You may not be the only client they have. They may have four other clients besides you. So, you know, you're helping them and you don't have to, you know, you're not hiring a full time employee. You don't have to do 40 hours a week. You don't have to do that. Some people do hire VAs full time, like they have a full time assistant and you could do that. I recommend if you're going to do that, you may want to consider hiring somebody in like the Philippines or another country because that's the only way you can afford it really. But um, yeah, you can consider that. So let's talk about the next topic, which is your business model and stress and 
look, when you start making money as an entrepreneur, I've been running a business for like 10 years and it's there's been ups and downs. It's a lot. It is a lot that goes into it. You're the CEO. You're in charge of marketing, sales, operations. You know, everything's really on you at the end of the day. Even if you hire virtual assistants, it's great. It can help you save time. But at the end of the day, you're going to experience different phases, different periods of time. You may feel differently. And so you want to make sure you have the right business model that is in alignment with you, your personality. And I really had to kind of learn that the hard way because I just tried to do whatever made money and it wasn't always like, just because it makes money doesn't mean you should do it really. So sometimes you have to think about your personality. What can you do to make money, but also something that goes with your personality that you feel good to manage on a consistent basis that you can actually maintain long term, right? So you money is important, but it has to also be something sustainable that you can uh, you know, maintain. So think about do you want to have an agency model where you are, you know, kind of like the middle woman or middle man between the client and the team. You could do that. You can be a solopreneur where it's just you mainly. If you're going to be a solopreneur, you definitely want to have a business model that you want to have multiple revenue streams. <laughs> I learned this the hard way. You want to have multiple revenue streams so you don't just have one thing. If one thing doesn't work, it'll, you know, cut off your whole income stream. You want to have different things. Right now, my business, I'm growing my affiliate marketing, my affiliate income. I, I promote products and things on my YouTube channel, so that helps. I'm also working towards a YouTube partner program. I hope I get in soon. <laughs> Make sure you watch this video to the end so I could collect those wash time hours. But I'm really um, just kind of trying to expand into different things. I sell digital products. I have a membership. So I have different types of income streams uh, for my business. So one thing I recommend is do that. And then just like I said, do what makes you happy. What do you like to do? Do that. I love to create content. I love content. I love recording videos. I love recording podcasts. I like documenting things. And so... That makes me happy. It's what I love to do. I love getting paid for it. I love being creative. I like to be a creator. And so that's where I'm taking my business now. We're kind of going more into the creator kind of mode. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'll keep you posted how it is and make sure you sign up for my newsletter. I have a lot of content on there. I share tips on hiring, outsourcing, creating systems, creating different types of revenue streams in your business. Make sure you sign up for the newsletter. There's a link right below this video and Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel as well, and I will see you in the next video.